It's our failure to control toxic chemicals before they cause trouble in the environment that haunts our waters all across the nation. Places like Puget Sound, which I've come to know well in recent years. The Sound, which lies off the coast of Seattle, is a place I've come to cherish as a phenomenal resource. A gorgeous natural playground. Gateway to the Pacific. And historically, a treasure house of fish and wildlife. But today, the Sound is in peril. I would put Puget Sound in the intensive care unit. The situation is critical. We've known for decades that Puget Sound had serious issues, but we're at a point now where the, the species that are almost extinct are, are telling us we've got some real bottom line problems here. Take these regional icons, the killer whales or orcas. They're a major tourist attraction, but increasingly, Puget Sound orcas are being closely studied by scientists as a barometer of the health of the entire sound. To see what scientists are learning, I headed out with Brad Hansen, the team leader with NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Up, over there. Yep. Hansen and his colleagues have been studying the orca population for several years. Why study these whales? Well, they're the, the top predator in the food chain, so they're essentially accumulating all the contaminants, they're the, you know, the last stop in, in the food chain, and so... Obviously... They're a laboratory, in a way. Well, I mean, they're, they're sure. a laboratory that tells you what's going on in the whole ecosystem. There, yes. The orca story is troubling. In one year, seven local orcas died. Their population is now down to 86. So low that in 2005, NOAA listed Puget Sound orcas as an endangered species. To figure out why the orca population is in decline, Hansen's team goes out after biological samples. We get up pretty close to these uh, whales in order to take samples at some point, right? Yeah, we get within just four or five meters. Four or five meters, so that's yep. up close. Yep. They shoot blunt-nosed darts into the orcas and extract small samples of blubber. That blubber is sent to the lab to be tested for a slew of contaminants, especially telltale toxins like PCBs. The lab results have been alarming. Our research over the last 10 to 13 years has been able to demonstrate that these killer whales are the most PCB contaminated mar marine mammals in the world. So we're very, very concerned about what that might mean to their health. PCBs are cancer-causing chemicals so toxic that Congress banned them three decades ago, but they keep showing up. PCBs are probably the number one persistent contaminant of concern anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, they bioaccumulate in food webs. You mean they build up? They build up in food webs and in organisms. We have trouble getting rid of them. We, we have a lot of trouble getting them out of our system. When I say we, uh, I mean humans, rats, killer whales, harbor seals, doesn't really matter. Increasingly, scientists worry that PCBs are a problem, not just for orca whales. These animals are eating wild fish. Wild fish is good for us, too. But if there's contaminants in it, it's going to have an adverse impact on us. So you know, that's, that's the thing, is that that's why these animals are important sentinel species, not just for the ecosystem in general, but also for humans. At the Center for Whale Research, Director Ken Balcom has been keeping records for three decades on the whales that make Puget Sound their regular home. Fewer whales are making it to maturity. The population is declining. Mm. We are seeing uh, probably the next 20 years we'll be witnessing the departure of this population. You think they're gone? They're going to die, die out? I've already told our government folks that we can go through this for about 20 more years 
if we don't provide a remedy and we will see the end of this population. Okay, so Falcom and his staff know these whales so well by sight that they can track them from birth to death. What are these charts? Uh, these are the family trees of all the whales we've been studying for the past 32 years. And we just put in the tombstone a, markers, Balcom told me, underscore a worrisome trend among the youngest, most vulnerable orcas. These older whales up here, they died. That, that's kind of normal. But to have so many down here, these younger whales die, is that a bad sign? That's the distressing part, is the mortality pattern we're seeing now is that young whales are dying way before they even mature. So these, these He's alarmed at the high levels of PCBs that Hansen's team found in younger whales, which absorb PCBs from their mother's milk. Are there enough parallels between the way the human body works, the chemistry and biology of the human body, and the whales, so that we can actually take lessons from them? Yes, we can take lessons from not only the whales, but the seals and the fish. And it's been demonstrated in the health statistics in especially Arctic environments, cold environments where there's a high fat diet. And the children of these high Arctic people are suffering these same problems, immune deficiencies, reproductive problems. All of these are affecting humans as well as the other mammals. At NOAA testing labs like this one, Scientists have established that king salmon in Puget Sound are much more heavily contaminated with PCBs than salmon in other Pacific coastal waters. Everything we see points to Puget Sound being a hotspot for PCBs and a persistent problem. We've seen uh, contamination of animals. We've seen no improvement in uh, the levels of PCBs in the last 20 odd years despite regulations implemented in the 1970s. And that, to me, indicates there are continuous inputs from land-based sources, from the sediments, and delivering them right into that food web.